Chancellor Patton, President Gertler, Dean Bernay, Professor Lowen, members of the platform party, family and friends of the graduating classes, my long-suffering family and friends, and most important, the two classes of 2022 we are here to celebrate. Graduates, after today, each of you, each of you in different ways, at different speeds, and in different directions, will embark on the next phase of your professional life. As you do, I suggest you consider the importance of perspective, of seeing the bigger picture, ultimately of getting to the point where you are able to identify a purpose, a purpose to your career. It may be helpful if I explain what I mean by purpose through the parable known as the three bricklayers. One day, while walking down the street, a man saw three bricklayers. And he asked the same question of each. He said, what are you doing? The first responded gruffly, I'm earning five bucks an hour. Sounding bored, the second said, I'm putting bricks on top of each other. The third paused and then with considerable pride said, I'm helping construct a beautiful edifice. Each bricklayer was doing the same task. However, only the third, only the third was able to see the bigger picture, identify the purpose in what he was doing. Personally, I wish that earlier in my career, I'd thought about the bigger picture. It would have made the path from where you are now, all of you are now, young and full of promise to where I am now, old and full of aches and pains, <laughs> much more meaningful. A bit about that path, and you've heard a little bit already, but I'm going to put my own spin on it. After I obtained my commerce degree, I took the most logical, the most logical next step. I ran a fishing camp on an island in northern Ontario. <laughs> what followed was 100-hour work weeks, cooking on the cook's day off, bartending on the bartender's day off, pulling snakes out of water pumps. Okay, one snake out of one water pump. <laughs> but I think you get the picture. It was interesting, but not pretty. My perspective at the time was that I had a job. Yeah, a different kind of job, but I didn't see anything more than that. I didn't even think about how those years would contribute to what I was to become. But I now see that in helping people enjoy their time at the lodge, even when the fish weren't biting, I was developing skills important to the path that lay ahead. After two years running the camp, a bus trip back to Toronto, a job as a cocktail waitress, and finally four years at U of T Law Plus Barad, and during which I gave birth to two children, I found myself doing litigation initially in two large law firms. I then started my own firm just as I welcomed my third child into the world for many reasons many reasons. It gives me great pride that my youngest formed part of today's procession. During the years I practiced law, the clearer picture of my career emerged. Sure, I was earning an income. Sure, I was completing work that needed to be done for my clients. Both were important, but more important, more important was the, that I was helping people put problems behind them. What followed was 25 years on the bench, an amazing part of my life, during which I had the privilege of having a more direct role in playing, in helping people move past their problems. Of course, they didn't all agree with the help I provided, <laughs> but at least in most cases, the turmoil that brought them before the court came to an end. On occasion, I even had the privilege of making a bigger contribution to the edifice, of helping people in a broader way, 
A good example is the decision in m &H, about which you've already heard. m &H had a welcoming impact on our country as it led to the Halpern decision that legalized same-sex marriages and near equality for all sexes and genders. Every Canadian, every Canadian benefited from these decisions. My additional benefit was that m &H was a significant factor in my being appointed to head the independent civilian review into missing person investigations. The review was prompted in large part by the tragic deaths of members of Toronto's LGBTQ2S plus communities. Concerns were raised about whether the response of the Toronto Police to reports of missing persons was tainted by systemic bias or discrimination against members of these communities, as well as marginalized or vulnerable communities generally. My findings of systemic. Systemic discrimination formed the basis for 151 recommendations designed to promote efficient, effective, bias-free policing for missing person investigations specifically and better police relations for all members of our, community, of our community, particularly those who are marginalized and vulnerable. The review gave me the opportunity to help people I used to judge, but I helped them in a different manner. I worked with them in a different manner. I sat with them, not above them. We worked together with the common goal of addressing their problems, many of which were rooted in discrimination. I learned so very much from the marginalized and vulnerable, the homeless, trans people, those with mental health issues, and the indigenous, to name a few. I submitted my report in April of 2021, and for the first time, first time since I was 12, I didn't have a job. It was, actually, it was actually quite scary. I wondered if it was maybe time to put the slippers on. I mentioned that possibility to the talented lawyer and wonderful human being, Terry O'Sullivan. His response, Gloria, I'm sure you don't even own a pair of slippers. Well, he was right. So now I'm a mediator and arbitrator. Once again, I have committed myself to helping people solve their problems. Once again, I am being both challenged and inspired. Clearly, clearly this is what I was meant to be doing during the last 25 years of my career. 25 years. <laughs> I digress from the bricklayer theme with the observation that this special day is taking place during Pride Month. In honor of Pride, I would like to share a particularly important aspect of my personal connection with the LGBTQ2S plus communities. And that is my friendship with Professor Swan, who taught me contracts when I was at U of T Law. Professor Swan recently awarded the Order of Canada is a leading thinker, writer, and educator. In addition to being a longtime partner at Air Burles, Professor Swan has taught at six Canadian universities and has written award-winning texts in contract law. She is also actively involved in her community, mainly with the LGBTQ2S plus communities, particularly the trans people. There's good reason for the professor's enthusiastic support for the trans community. When Professor Swan taught me contracts in the mid-70s, her name was John. In 2008, John became Angela. With considerable joy, Angela describes her good fortune in finally being able to be the person she always knew she was to be. Angela has taught me much, not only about contract law, 
but also about the challenges of being transgender. I'm truly honoured that Angela is here to help me celebrate this special day. Thank you, Angela. You are probably wondering how I'm ever going to get from this digression, motivated by a desire to acknowledge Pride Month and Angela, back to my main theme, the one linked to the guys with the bricks. Not being able to come up with a clever segue, I'm just going to go straight back to the third bricklayer, the one who saw the bigger picture, the purpose, the purpose in what he was doing. As a lawyer, a judge, a reviewer, and now a mediator and arbitrator, I have earned a living performing tasks related to the law. But the bigger picture. The bigger picture, one that has given me a great sense of fulfillment, is that I have been part of a process that helps people put their problems behind them. I conclude by saying this. Whatever path you choose to pursue, I urge you to stand back from time to time and try to identify your purpose. The way in which your career can be expression not only of what you are doing, but also of who you are. I would like to thank the University of Toronto for bestowing this honour and to all the graduates for the great privilege of letting me share with you this important occasion as you celebrate all you have achieved in getting here and contemplate, and as you contemplate, the unpredictable and most certainly interesting and rewarding road ahead. Congratulations to you all. <laughs>